Hallelujah. 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 Such a privilege to be in God's house tonight, to be together tonight. Welcome to the very first day in the month of April. April is for flourishing. Welcome to the month that you flourish and you flourish with ease. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you flourish with ease. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. I want to encourage you to please tell everyone we're live. Go on BBC, go on CNN, go on Fox News, go on Arise TV, go on TVC, go on Dot Television, every platform, your social media platform. Tell them it's happening right now. Great things are happening. The St. Mother's alive. And we are ready to enjoy everything that God has for us. Please join us on Instagram and Telegram if you cannot connect on Mixer. Instagram and Telegram, we're live at Oye Tomi Adesa on Instagram and on Pastor Tomi Adesa's messages on Telegram. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us are ready for all that God has for us in this month? How many of us know that God thought towards us our peace and not of evil? What of the best months of the year? It's my sweetheart's best month. And we're celebrating, we're celebrating. Can we come into God's presence tonight with a heart of gratitude? Can you come in and just say thank you? Can everyone who is in this room with me maintain a posture of worship? Can we come in with a heart of gratitude? Can we come in with a heart of gratitude? Can we say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we worship you. Father, we adore you. You're worthy of all praises. You're worthy of all honor. There is none like you, O God, and none can be compared with you. You're good, you're kind, you're merciful, you're sweet, you're precious. Ah, you're precious. You have been so good to us. Ah, la mana ko si bala bana di bara tebi ana ko si bala bana kei adarada. Mana na kei ana mana dosa bala jada bedosa. Inda la tebi ala mano si bala jada bedada bara. Ina la na kei ana tosi ana malia la tebi ada gana ko. Elevina ande lebrendo si a tebi. Hey, I'm not taking my love. 
seated for a few minutes. Are you ready to praise God tonight? Yes. And then, if you hear, you don't bump me. That's me. Right now, like I'm ready, super ready to praise God tonight. My heart is filled with gratitude. Filled with gratitude. And I'm just grateful to God because He's such a merciful God. And He's a God that is infinitely mindful of us infinitely mindful of us. So the Lord gave us a word for the month of April and I'll share that word with us. Share a few instructions with us and then we will praise God. Today is about God. It's not about us. <laughs> because this month, eh, when we, your testimony will be, people they ask me, say, now waiting they make me shine. share the word of God with us very quickly. Psalm 92 verse 12 to 15. Psalm 92 verse 12 to 15. Thank you. It says the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. It shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. So it's those of us who are righteous will flourish like the palm tree. We will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. You see, these are very, very strong terms. When you read the Bible, read it with a dictionary. Read it with the English dictionary and read it with the Bible dictionary. The English dictionary will tell you the literal meaning of the word. Then sometimes you need to find, understand the context of that word. You know, within the meaning of the word within that context. Since you will flourish like a palm tree. Do you know that palm trees really die? And palm trees, they survive even the toughest weathers. When there is a storm and there is, um, what is this? Thing when what the beach overflows the land, a tsunami of water. Palm trees don't break; they don't get uprooted. They bend. They can bend, and the trees. I've seen palm trees that bend, and the trees literally touching the floor, but it's come back up. It's like rubber band. You want this stretch it to come back up. So the Lord is saying that you will flourish like that. It does not matter what you are going through. You won't look like your situation. You will walk through fire. By the time you come out on the other side, you'll be looking better. It says you will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. You see, when you are praying, be praying for yourself that in your generation, you'll be like a cedar of Lebanon. And I want to give you that assignment. Then I gave you assignment last month. Some of you did not do my assignment. I said you forgot. I said you study the simple-minded. All the verses that make mention of the simple in the book of Proverbs. This assignment, don't do it. It's a surprise that I'll come to your house and come and report to your husband. Oh my, oh, I shall be moving. Cedar in Lebanon. The cedar tree is a, is a tree that lives for many decades. For many decades. So when the Bible says you will grow like a cedar in Lebanon, it means that even when you are old, you will still be making impact. You still be increasing. You will not see. There are very few people who operate in the category under the anointing of the cedar in Lebanon. Some people get to a 50 and that's the peak. Some people get to a 60 and that's the end. 
Some get to it 17 and that's the end. But for some people till they die, every generation will still be seeking them. They remain sought after till they die. That's what the Bible is saying about him. It says, those that, plant, those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. As long as you are in your way, take up point ballet. Let your mind be at rest. Your portion is flourishing. It does not matter what's happening in the world. Your portion is flourishing. It says you will bring forth, you will still bring forth fruit in your old age. You will be fat and flourishing. You see, I want to check online for the meaning of flourishing. And the dictionary meaning says to grow luxuriantly. You don't get it. It's not just growth. To grow Logs, you know what something needs to be luxurious. There is normal, and when they say these are luxury apartments, it means that you have the best of the best. It means that the furnishing, the way the bathroom is, is designed to make you. It's a bathroom that you can sit in for two hours and forget that you're in the bathroom. A luxury apartment means that you have the best exquisite furnitures in it. And the kind of service that comes with it is the best. It means that God is saying that in this month of April, I'm not just going to meet your needs. I'm going to provide even things that you don't need. I'm not just going to meet your needs. You're going to have an overflow. An overflow so that it will flow to people that are connected to you and even the people that are not connected to you. Your cup will be pressed down, shaking together and running over. You don't understand pressed down. You know when you can buy vegetable oil and they're putting it in the gallon. When it's almost full, almost full they'll put still the gallon to the side and fill it up again. Then when they're about to burn, they will fill it so that by the time you cover it, a part of it will spill over. And then the gallon will be like this because it has been stretched to capacity. God says that it will not only give you, it will fill you, it will press it down to make sure that every corner of your life is filled with the overflow and still it will not run over. It will still run over. You are going to grow luxuriant. It's a graceful movement. And you had better believe it. It does not matter what you have. I believe this word with the whole of my heart. It does not matter. It, it, it does not matter. Jeremiah 17, verse 7 to 8, our Bible verse for the year, the green year. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. For it shall be as a tree planted by the waters. You will spread out your roots by the river. You will not see when heat comes. When other people's finances, marriage, health is drying up, you will not see it. And leaves shall be green, and you will not be careful in the year of drought. You will not live in scarcity, even though it is the year of drought. The economists will say, oh, we don't have this. This one is falling apart. God is saying you will not be careful in the year of drought. Neither will you cease from yielding your fruits. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I'll share with us very the instructions that God gave for this month. Last night I was up. You know, for some hours to just press into God till uh, the beginning of today. And as I went to sleep, the Lord gave me some word in my dreams. And you know, He gave me a word while I was praying, and even when I went to sleep, He gave me a dream that I will share with us quickly. Hebrews 10 35 to 39. That's our first instruction. Hebrews 10 35 to 39. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Do not cast away your confidence. Don't get tired of doing good. Don't get tired. Don't leave that place because the reward has not come. That's a warning for us. Don't leave the place of your reward. Don't cast away your confidence. It has great recompense of reward. God is not late and God has not forgotten you. If God forgets you, 
for less than a second, the enemy will take you out. God is not late. He is coming. He is not late. It says we have need of patience. And you know that's the second time God was speaking to me about patience within the last three days. The Lord was telling me about two days ago, because was it during Sunday service yesterday in the morning? He said many people are spiritually weary and tired because they are not patient. The faith walk is not gra gra. It's not by gra gra. It is by patience because the transformation of your soul takes time. You, you are looking at result, but God is looking at the transformation happening in your soul. It takes time. It takes time. We have need of patience. The moment you start putting yourself under pressure, I need to marry by this time. I need to have 15 children by now. I'm supposed to have built five houses now. The moment you get into that place, you begin to make yourself weak. And then you will lose your confidence in God. As long as you're doing, I'm not calling you to complacency. I'm saying be diligent, but exercise patience. Do your best, but don't try to manipulate the results in your life. Increase your capacity. Go the extra mile, but don't seek to determine and manipulate the results of your life. Let your lifting be by the hand of the Lord. Don't make your lifting questionable. And don't make God withdraw from your life. You see, it says that for you will live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul has no pleasure. The moment you draw back and begin to look for alternative measures, you are telling God that you are capable of managing your life. So that's the first instruction to us. The second one has to do with a dream. One of the dreams that the Lord gave me last night. In that dream, you know, I saw an elderly woman who was looking very beautiful myself and my husband went on a journey. But I saw in that dream, I don't have a relationship with her, but God used her as a type to describe something. She was in the garden, it was a fruit garden, and that garden was flourishing. In fact, if you have seen the new month flyer, the new month flyer for April, it's a, it's a correct depiction of what was in that garden. It had all kinds of fruits. And the fruits were so much. You were, were as myself and my husband were walking in the garden and we're trying as much as possible not to step on the fruits that fall in on the floor. The apples were big and ripe, beautiful, and the fruits were not decaying. In, in fact, in the garden we ate watermelon. The watermelon was so big that you can't pluck it from the tree. You cut the portion you want to eat, and it is still fresh. As in, I'll be gardening of eating, not going below. Yeah, <laughs> it was still fresh, like. We took a knife, we cut the watermelon, you will eat it, it's still there. You know, the watermelon is like tomato, I mean, well, it, it grows on the floor. It was still there, you cut the one you want to eat, very pink. And the woman was tending to the garden. And she was discussing with us. So, let me tell you one thing that God will do in this month. It will make your life colorful and fruitful. Yeah. It will make your life colorful and fruitful. Yeah. Then as we were there, we began to talk about a lady that is prominent in the body of Christ and is known for her purity and faithfulness to God. And you know, we discovered that the lady actually was living a double life and she was exposed. So when I woke up and I was telling my husband, as I was discussing the dream with him, I had understanding. I said it's not the lady God is talking about, God is using the lady as a prototype. And I remembered one of the things that Adjo that said this year that this year is the year that things will be exposed. So this month, you're going to write it down, God is going to expose false men of God. This April, a wind is going to blow. That wind will expose false men of God. Their cup is full and it starts from now. It starts from now. And God is going to expose them not because he wants to make fun of them. It is for the deliverance of the body of Christ. False men and women of God, false prophets, wickedness in the body of Christ. Because that person was in the later came to the garden and was lamenting to us that she, she should not have been exposed like that. So God is not talking about outsiders, it's cleaning house. It's cleaning house. It's cleaning house. And some of them are genuine children of God, but they have entered into things that they knew were not of God. 
They are like sons of Eli raised in the house of the Lord. They know the name of the Lord. They know the priesthood of God. Yes, they chose to bring a straight fire before God. And now God wants to respond to that straight fire. God wants to respond to straight fire. Hallelujah. Amen. And then also, lastly, the Lord showed me horns. I saw people growing horns. And horns are not by. I know that every time I want to show the devil, we will put on. They will wear black coats and put on. The devil is not, you know, the devil is a liar and mistress of everything. Horns actually are, are symbolized. So let me break my notes and just go from my notes. Psalm 92 verse 10. Psalm 92 verse 10. It says, You have exalted my own like that of the wild ox. You have anointed me with fresh oil. You see, the on is for enforcing victory. The bull fights and he fights with what? The arm. So God is going to increase your capacity. What you need to dominate is going to deliver it to you in this month. You are going to come into your own and you will have what it takes to defend your own. You have what it takes to defend your own. When God answered Anna, and Anna was going to testify in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. And Anna prayed and said, My heart rejoiced. Rejoice it in the Lord. My arm is exalted. You see, arm is a sign of victory. Like I have come into my own. When God gave us someone, said, she said, My arm is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is now enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. This is going to be your testimony. Amen. Your mouth will be enlarged over all your enemies. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I see, I saw arms. And with that arm, people were breaking gates. Gates of limitations. So you are growing arms. With that arm, you become audacious. You'll be full of courage. And you would enter into the territories that have been given to you. In the name of Jesus. So right now we'll go into a time of praise. And then when we come back, I'll speak a blessing over you. I'll speak a blessing over you and then we'll take our offering. No, I think we should post the account details. As the praise is going on, please give your offering. So we'll post the account details in the comment section on Instagram. Please help me welcome my darling brother, Femi Sack, for a powerful time of praise. Please, put on your dancing shoes. Your neighbor, your landlord must know that you're praising God. Get your musical instrument. And if you don't have any musical instrument at all, you don't have shekere. But why do you don't have shekere at all? I don't understand. You don't have shaker, you don't have anything. Go and get your cooking spoons. Go and get your pots. Your mouth is with a musical instrument. Here, for me, over to you.
We adore your holy name, O God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We are not the people who have come to you today with a heart full of murmurings, a heart full of complaining, a heart full of whining. We are not the people who are only mindful of the things that are yet to be done. Lord, we are mindful of your manifold blessings in our lives. Blessings you called upon us from our mother's womb and even till today. We thank you, Lord, because we cannot deny that your hand has been upon our lives. We're standing in the land of the living, not because we know how to live. <laughs> We're standing in the hand land of the living because you have been our covering. You're being our shelter. You're being our fortress. You are the one who watches over us and you do not sleep nor slumber. We thank you, Lord, for our husbands. We thank you for our children. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you for the many enterprises of our hands and of our hearts. We thank you for help in the morning, help in the afternoon, help in the night. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for many, many answered prayers. We thank you for wise counsel. We thank you for divine protection. We thank you for defense from enemy within and enemies without. We thank you, precious Father, for food on our table, clothes on our back. We thank you, Lord, for good health. We thank you, Lord, for sound mind. We thank you for victory. We thank you for the grace to come into your presence. We thank you for the grace to delight in you. We take none of this for granted, O oh God. We thank you for who you are. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for who you are. You are God. You are the only living God. You are good and there is no evil in you. You are kind and full of mercy. You are tender in your love towards us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We are grateful. Thank you. 
Jesus, your house 
will be filled with good things. Amen. Your house will be filled with good things. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the month of April, you know, the Lord is showing me right now that there will be a wave of sickness. But we and our household are exempted in Jesus' name. Amen. Good health is our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say good health is our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. We and our household, anyone under your roof, and anyone connected to you by blood or by relationship, is exempted from diseases, sicknesses, and anything that has to do with ill health in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Your hands will be filled with good things. Amen. Nothing is permitted to die in your hands. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Come on, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. before we go to bed and uh, please remember what's happening on the 13th of april lagos mother's conference lagos mother's conference is here ladies and gentlemen if you have not registered go register right away we're gonna have you know the ministry of pastor sumbo adeoye it's gonna be a powerful time in god's presence so please Register. Don't say, oh, my children, and eh, who will take care of them? We have children's department. In fact, the children's department, the venue where we're there on Sunday, lovely atmosphere, air conditioned, colorful classes, screen. So please, the children, you, they will not even want to go. They will remember that mommy is in the auditorium. Just bring them and they'll be served lunch. They'll be well catered for. We have teachers and nannies. We have also provided free transportation for those that are in Lagos, Ikorodu, Ota, Abelkuta, and Iba. Don't. So please, don't be your exa excuse exactly. Tell me, and registration link is in my bio. So please come. It's going to be a powerful time in God's presence. And lastly, I told us during the 14 day prayer challenge in the month of March, let me tell Brian Manor to calm down small because I can say my expression. I tell you, I'm going to reduce them. Um, you know, I told us during the 14 day prayer challenge that we're going to do some challenges in the month of April to grow our businesses because, you know, God has promised I will flourish in this year. And so we got to tap into the resources available and also to build our relationship with our children. So we're going to start tomorrow with the seven days grow your business challenge. It's going to start tomorrow. It's not going to be posted on Instagram. So if you're not in our community, each, each, each. Join the community. It's going to be posted only in the WhatsApp group, and then so that we and the reason why we're doing it on WhatsApp group is so that it can be effective. We want to be able to discuss with each other, advise one another, follow you immediately, slide into your DM, patronize you, and see how we can be a blessing to one another. Because there's money all around. Don't let anybody tell you that there's no money. When anyone tells that there's no money, say it's a lie. Tell them, say I know that it's a lie. Where I stay in this kingdom, there's money. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a wonderful night rest.